I wish I had told my past self. Oh, I was just so dumb and clueless. Work hard, play hard culture. I'm not on holiday. I think there's always gonna be stuff to learn. Hi everyone and thank you for clicking on this YouTube video. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I'm Mabel and I live here in Dubai and I've been making videos to help you live your best life, whether you're moving to Dubai or moving to a new city and you need some tips. So I wanted to do a video because a very, I don't know, I'd say monumental day has just passed um, and that has been three years since I moved, which is just like mad to me. When I saw on my Instagram and it came up like three years ago today, me posing with my suitcases at Manchester airport, it literally just like blew my mind because I can't believe how quick it's gone and, and just looking back at the kind of three years all in one go just made me feel a lot of feels. So I wanted to do a video on it, just reflecting on the past three years and everything that I've learned really and everything that I kind of wish I had known and just kind of how different I am now to how I was then and all of that stuff. So I wanted to put it in a video and I hope you find this insightful. There is so much stuff that I did not know about when I moved and I just was so clueless. I was going in totally blind. I remember when I kind of decided I was going to move, I really, like I went on YouTube and I was like looking for kind of just just tips and just like about the life here and I didn't really find that much to be honest nothing was very helpful so I was totally clueless and I went in totally blind so and I did actually move when I was 19 as well so I was just a little baby to be honest like now I'd look back at that little 19 year old girl that moved and I'm just like oh my god I have so much to tell you like you're so dumb and clueless like you know nothing so I'm 22 now and I'm 23 in June and I've made a little list of just things that I wish I'd known and just things that I would tell my past self and just things that I've learnt so and it's been really really fun for me kind of when I was brainstorming this video and just thinking about the journey that I've been on since living here and just what it's meant to me and my my life has it's just been amazing so I had a lot of fun kind of planning this video so anyway let's get into it got my pen a little notebook I'm so prepared <laughs> anyway so the first thing I want to just mention is that because I moved here quite young um, at 19 I think one of the biggest things and one of the biggest changes is just about growing up and independence and I think wherever you are in the world you will kind of get that you know when you're going from 19 to 22 I think there's always going to be such massive massive changes to your personality to your lifestyle you know the lessons that you learn so there's so much like in that area already without even Dubai coming into it um I know a lot of people kind of look at their uni experience when they're around that age as that kind of like defining moments where they make mistakes and learn that life lessons and all this kind of thing so I feel like I've said it quite often that moving to Dubai has been essentially my uni experience because I didn't go to university so it's kind of been that crazy roller coaster of meeting new people and living alone for the first time and all these things of course if you're moving to Dubai and you're already you know a proper grown-up and you're already living alone or you know whatever it is you've already been working for a long time then there's probably a lot of things that you kind of already know and you're probably already much more mature than I was when I moved here because it's such a unique city and I think there's always going to be stuff to learn. It's really hard to choose the main thing that has really made the experience but I think if you ask a lot of people that live here, they'll tell you the same thing and that is just socially, it's been incredible for meeting people, for making friends, for, you know, kind of sharing experiences with people from other corners of the world that you maybe never would have crossed paths with if you'd stayed in your hometown you know I think about all the people that I've come across in my three-year journey whether they're from the the GCC region or the Philippines or from France or from Canada or from any corner of the planet and I just think it's so incredible to kind of made these friends and relationships and you know learn about 
their life and their culture and I just think if I had stayed in my little hometown in the north of England I really would never have kind of come across such a range and such a diverse group and it really does affect your outlook and affect your kind of I don't know your your just knowledge you know of knowledge of the world and it's just such an important thing I think this is also another thing why people kind of go on a gap year or, or whatever and go and travel around around Asia or around Australia or wherever this is again something that I never did but I think I've had a lot of these same experiences of just kind of meeting people and in that in itself is such a learning curve for my confidence and meeting people and making new friends and kind of starting from scratch essentially has been just a scary but amazing achievement I think because it is really scary to leave behind your family and your friends and start totally afresh but I think I was so kind of worried about that and I think when I first moved here I was very much okay accept anyone that comes into your life be friends with anyone you know but now I think you know I have the confidence to know what I'm looking for even in a friendship and just think yes you are my kind of person you can stay in my life or you are not necessarily my kind of person you're too much energy for me um and yeah another one which is it's all it definitely in the same kind of realm but the independence that I've gained in three years has been is ridiculous actually in fact I think when I moved here I could essentially say I had next to no independence because I'd never lived on my own. I, had, I, I was working and in full-time work, but I was living with my grandparents in Manchester, lodging with them because I couldn't afford my own place in Manchester. So I was living with them and I, they'd make me my dinner, they'd buy me my breakfast cereal, you know, they'd do my washing. I was very much just a child, I think. And moving here, I've just you know it's just bizarre there's all the normal things that you get with moving out you know having to cook you for yourself or whatever it is but then it's also just I think the main thing is when something doesn't go your way or when something just goes wrong or you've had a bad day you've you've just need to deal with it yourself and you're not kind of running to your mum or to your parents or to your sister or it's just kind of coping on your own and it's a skill and it's hard it's really really hard but I think I was you know kind of thrown into that by living in a country that's so far away where FaceTime was blocked and luckily now we we have our Zoom calls but three years ago I just remember really finding it so annoying that I couldn't even just FaceTime. Keeping in touch is a whole other skill set as well that I've learned you know choosing what people in your life that you want to stay in touch with and making a conscious effort to make sure that you do maintain those relationships is another skill that you will learn from living in another country. Okay, so if this independence bracket, that's the umbrella term, and then within that, I think there's so much. So there's the bit that's kind of, you will be living on your own and taking care of yourself properly. Obviously there's situations, maybe you'll be moving here with your family or with your partner or whatever, but I was moving here alone, so I had to just look after me for the first time ever. So that was one kind of part of it. Another part of it, I'd say, is becoming independent financially and properly just earning my own money and then looking after that money. Now, if you watch my Downsides of Living in Dubai video, you'll know that I did mention debt as one of the downsides because I really just think it's shocking how easy it is to run up massive amounts of debts on credit cards in Dubai. And I think this is something that I had no idea about. You can file this under life lessons that should be taught in school, in my opinion, but they're not. I remember my company actually brought a representative from Emirates MBD Bank to my company to help us to set up an, a bank account. So I was like, great, I don't even have to go to the bank, I can do everything right here. They set me up my bank account and then it got to the end and they were like, okay, so now which credit card do you want? And 19 year old me was just like, oh my God, I've never had a credit card before. This is so cool, I can get a credit card. 
they were saying, yeah, it's free, you know, don't worry. Um, you just pay everything off within the same month and it's free, you won't pay anything. You get these benefits, 30% off the cinema or whatever it was. And I was thinking, oh my God, cool, I'll take that one. That sounds great. And then this is, again, it's just general life lessons because I've never had a credit card before and I didn't really know what I was doing. But I think the part that Dubai and living in Dubai plays in with that is that the lifestyle here is very, very tempting. There's a lot of very expensive places to go. There's a lot of people being very flashy. It's very easy to want that kind of lifestyle. And, you know, there's a lot of costs kind of upfront when you're getting your own place that are kind of not hidden, but just I didn't really realize. Like, just as a random example, when you set up your DWA, which is your electricity and water bills, there's a 2,000 dirham deposit, which is just kind of something you have to deal with, but not something I really plan for, etc. So anyway, just bearing this my lifestyle in mind and all these costs, I think I wish I could have just told my younger self to not even have accepted that credit card because once it's there, you will rely on it and you will abuse it. And I did actually run up such a massive amount on it that it was pretty much maxed out at 50,000 dirhams approximately, which is so stressful for me to even talk about. This was maybe about a year and a half ago, or about two years ago. Yeah, about two years ago when I first moved into this apartment because I was just paying for loads of furniture. That's a whole other thing I'm gonna get to in a minute. Um, there was, you know, all these upfront costs. And meanwhile, I really wanted to keep living my best life and being flashy and going to amazing places and, you know, not knowing how to save money, etc. So anyway, the point I'm making is, is that I wish I could have told my younger self to be more wary about getting a credit card. Luckily, it's all paid off now and it's been paid off for about, I think about a year, uh, kind of during COVID, I managed to pay it off. So that's a good curve to the story. We're all good now, but I did want to mention it just because I'm being honest and I think, you know, I've just heard a lot of other people be in really similar situations. So watch out for that, you know, if you're just moving. Don't accept the credit card, don't accept the loan if you, re if you don't need it, you know, because it's just tempting and difficult. And maybe you're more, maybe you're better with money than I am or was, but still. Also, with independence comes, now I don't like using the term self-care, to be honest, because I just find it a bit ridiculous how overused it is and how kind of meaningless it's become. But I do want to mention it within this bracket of independence because I think, you know, there's one thing is learning how to actually function on your own as a grown-up, moving here, etc. But another thing is actually being able to look after yourself properly and, you know, enjoy it and live a nice lifestyle. So one thing that I want to mention is I think I let myself the kind of first year especially get very, very anxious because of my career. I think this is obviously a massive generalization and every industry is gonna have different kind of takes on this, but from what I've seen in my industry, which has been e-commerce um, and marketing, but across a lot of kind of industries that I've seen, it's very much work hard, play hard culture. There's a lot of going, working overtime, being very dedicated, be expected to be always on, and I think without properly understanding boundaries and how to kind of say no to things that you can't take on, it can be very, very stressful. So I think I wish I would have told my younger self to have set better boundaries in order to look after herself better, look after myself better. Because I think there's so many things that affect your kind of stress levels, etc. And I think, yes, it's, such an incredible experience and I look back at that first year oh my god the first year I was here I was just I feel like I didn't sleep the whole year I was doing something every single day I was out all the time you know going to new places meeting new people um working really really hard at the same time so I never had a break and I think once you get to your kind of third year you realize that you've got time you know you know when you plan a holiday 
and you plan something for every single waking moment because you've only got a week to do everything. Well, I think something that I wish I had known was that I'm not on holiday, you know, I have time and I don't need to be doing something every single day to enjoy myself because you need time to rest. And I think that's something that's, I just, you know, I was very, very much under the kind of sleep when you're dead mentality. You just don't care about kind of resting or sleeping or eating proper meals or anything, but it's so important for your mental well-being that I wanted to mention it. And I think it does come under independence. It's also just in this kind of bracket of growing up. Now, moving on to career. This is a massive topic to talk about and to cover, and it's going to be difficult to pinpoint what have been the kind of highs and lows of it in the three years. Bearing in mind, essentially, I moved here for work, I moved here for a career, and most people that move here will be moving for an employment visa, which means you are here to work, so it's a massive, massive part of your life here. Now, let's start at the beginning, being offered a job. I wish I had told my past self to not accept that first offer. Now, this is, again, industry-specific or whatever, but from my experience, companies have a lot of money, right, and they will try and poach you from countries where the average salary for your position is lower. So when I got offered this job, and I, my first job I was offered here was at 12,000 dirhams a month. I don't mind disclosing that information to you guys. But anyway, and I thought, oh my goodness, that is incredible. You know, I could be earning nearly double what I was on in the UK, because obviously it's tax free. I was so excited by that offer that I was like, yes, I took it, I snapped it up straight away. Now, I kind of wish I had then gone, actually, can we bump it up a bit more? And I wish I'd done a little bit more research into my industry here, because I do think one of the reasons companies will hire from other companies is to offer them a lower salary package. But no matter, you know, I think that's just part of learning to negotiate and learning to know your worth. It's similar in every country, but that's something I wish I had known. Something else with career that I already touched on is just about setting boundaries. Um, I work in social media. Social media never switches off and you're expected to be working essentially all the time, maintaining channels, whatever it is. So I think something I wish I told myself would just to be a little bit more confident to say no to certain things and to set better boundaries. It's something that I really, really pride myself on now because I've kind of seen the bad sides of not doing that. And now I'm really, really pleased with how I managed to, you know, maintain my personal time and set boundaries and say no to things that I cannot take on. Now I kind of was hopeful for this next point when I moved, but I didn't really understand the full spectrum of it. And that is that you can advance your career very, very quickly here, I have found. So, I spent my first two years here in the same job, which I did, it was great for me. But I think in hindsight, I think I could have been, I could have even jumped quicker in order to progress quicker. But no matter, you know, everything, I do believe that it's kind of, it all has brought me to where I am now at right timing, so I'm thankful for that. But I think, it's very good to be very aware of what other jobs are kind of in your in your market because as soon as I mentioned that I wanted to leave my first job, they were so keen to keep me that they then would offer me more money, different contract, whatever. So I think it's just a little tip is to just, you know, make sure you're constantly checking what's out there on the market and knowing your value and, you know, have the confidence to mention this at work. I think that's something that has been a learning for me in these three years. Okay, moving away from career chats now, let's move into just the realm of friends and relationships. So I have been really, really lucky to have met my boyfriend here, which is not something I would have expected at all all oh my god not at all when i moved here i was like oh my god i'm you know i'm young and i need to be single in a new city and then six weeks later i met this guy so <laughs> 
you can't plan these things. But anyway, I do think what I wanted to mention, something I wish I could have told myself at first six months I was here, I was very much under the impression, no, I've moved here, I must be single. Everyone in Dubai is single, it's a single person's place, you know, you have to just be meeting people and dating, but keep yourself available. I, that was just what I thought you had to do. But in reality, there is no rules at all. And you know, just because you've just moved to a new city, it doesn't mean, you know, maybe, you, maybe you're moving here with a partner or whatever it is, there is no reason, you are not missing out. That's what I'm trying to say. You are not missing out on some wild lifestyle by getting into a relationship. I think that's what I would have told my past self. Oh, I was just so dumb and clueless. Then another thing, making friends. It's, I was quite lucky in my first job to have a lot of young people in that job, but I think I wish I had known uh, I wish I'd had the confidence to have reached out to more people online to make new friends. Now, I was lucky because I actually got reached out to by people, which I then said, oh yeah, cool, like, let's be friends. Um, and now they're some of my closest friends, which is amazing. But I think, yeah, I was kind of not lazy, but I just kind of was scared. And I thought the only friend, the only people in my circle were my work people and you know, I then moved in with them, which was so lucky, but I felt like it was just very enclosed. So I think I would have told 19 year old Mabes to have just branched out a bit more. But again, I just didn't know, I just didn't know what I was doing. You know, I just didn't know. So if you're moving here, go and watch my other video, which is all about making friends. And one of those things is to put yourself out there and don't be afraid to just slide into someone's DMs, literally. So now I just want to quickly talk about just kind of the best and worst of the three years. Oh my God, it sounds weird even saying worst because there has been no worst bit, you know? It's all been incredible. And what's amazing is that I can confidently, confidently say that moving here has been the best decision I've made in my life so far because this journey has just been incredible and I just feel like I'm such a a bigger, better, well-rounded, more independent, more, you know, secure, more confident person because of this experience that I've had. What are the best parts? Oh my God, I didn't plan for this bit. This, <laughs> I didn't plan for it. Um, but I, w I just want, I thought it would be a nice way to kind of finish the video by talking the best and worst. Some of the best memories I've had have been with my boyfriend Connor that I've met while being here and I think what's been amazing is because he obviously moved here on his own as well and didn't know anyone so we, we really kind of have been experiencing it all brand new together which has been amazing. When I've been living here for about a year my other friend Genevieve moved here and then a few months after like, when was it six months after that Kirsty moved here and just a few weeks ago Georgia has moved here these are all just my friends from home and having I think what's been incredible part of it is inspiring change in other people's lives as well because I think even when I think about I have a younger sister who's 18 and I think just being an example for her has been amazing, you know, and just thinking and kind of just showing what a lifestyle you can have if you just have the confidence to take it. So I think that's been one of the best parts is just kind of setting, setting an example for my sisters and for my friends. It's been really, really amazing. Then I could talk for ages about all the incredible sights that I've seen, the incredible experiences that I've had, the touristy things, all the less than touristy things. It's all been incredible. Then there's the career. I'm so pleased with kind of how I've progressed in my career and how I've managed to, in the past year, kind of get more freelance projects. There's so much opportunity here, so I'm so thankful for that. The worst parts, gosh, this is going to be really difficult because even even running up loads of credit card debt, I think, has taught me so much, so I don't regret anything. You know, I think even getting really anxious over work and overworking myself, that's, I've come out the other side a better person for it because I'm, you know, more 
secure and stable now. So I think there hasn't been any low points that I regret at all. So I think I'm so thankful for that. Everything has just been a total lesson and I just feel like I don't even recognise the person that I was three years ago. She's grown up. I'm sure that in another three years time, I will literally look back at me now and be like, oh my God, I don't even recognise that girl. She needs to grow up. But for now, I'm feeling very satisfied with just my journey and my personal growth in the past three years. So that's all I wanted to share really. And it brings me so much joy that you know, I get so many comments saying how useful you find this channel, so I just really feel so happy about that and thank you so much for all the lovely comments and messages, honestly, it's so, so lovely to read. So once again, thank you very much for joining me here on my YouTube channel and for subscribing. Please subscribe down below and I hope you found this video kind of insightful and kind of has inspired you to think about your journey and what you're looking for getting out of your journey to Dubai. You know, a lot of people view their time as a kind of set period and maybe not forever. So I think seeing it all in a little three-year chunk has most of all just made me kind of think okay what else can this give me you know I've got this what else do I need to get out of this journey and yeah that's food for thought for me so I'll leave this video here and do and go check out my Instagram and my TikTok if you want to have a little stalk of me and I will see you in the next video thank you for watching guys bye